when we talk about nothing, there's there's a, there's a big absence of what that actually is. So this data structure here, this thing that's containing this thing inside of it, is existence. Let's say we have like, you know, some impossibly high level of understanding of how the brain works. We would understand that this particular structure is giving way to a particular set of senses or experiences. Yeah, so I think the next segue here is to talk about um, like experience and consciousness and how that ties into all of this. Let's start with nothing, right? So let's start with the concept of not having anything. So in this concept, we're not just talking about like, say we have our universe here. We're not just talking about like, you know, an empty spot of space here as being nothing. We're talking about the regions outside of the universe, right? And I would stipulate that there is, I mean, <laughs> again, it's redundant to say this, but there is nothing outside the universe, you know, and I don't want to get bogged down with like, uh, you know, dumb arguments about, well, maybe there's other universes. If there are other universes, then those other universes exist within what I'm calling the universe. Okay. When we talk about nothing, there's, there's, uh, so there's a big absence of what that actually is. Um, it's kind of funny because nothing means nothing, right? Like there's no definition that encompasses what nothing is because nothing is necessarily nothing. Um, and so there's, there's no, there, like, <clears throat> let's just, let's think of it this way. If we fall into this region out here, if we fall into this nothingness region outside of reality, then, uh, we don't, right? <laughs> we can't, we necessarily can't. Um, and I'm not saying can't because like, you know, we know some aspect of like what this is outside of reality, but I'm saying if there is even a single bit of information that indicates some somethingness present in this region, then this region necessarily falls within this region, right? There is, there is, it's not that there is like nothing existing in space here, rather that there is, there is not even like space or time here. It's, there's nothing, right? But I think I've kind of exhausted this point here and hopefully it's, it's a little clearer now. So in order to have something tangible or in order to have the universe have some contents that is, is existing, even in a state that I would describe as without time at all, um, we have to have some structure that is providing the universe its somethingness, right? Because if we're not something, then we're nothing and therefore we necessarily fall outside of the universe. But since we have an experience of something, then it necessarily requires something to exist. This kind of gets into Vedantic philosophy, but the discrete experience that you experience is this entire reality. Um, but that we'd have to talk and think more about that to make it not sound like it doesn't make any sense. But basically there's, I think the easiest metaphor is that there's a data structure that um, exists. And what this data structure is, in my mind, is experience. It's existence, right? So if, if something, well, okay, I use those words interchangeably, but I don't think that I should. Well, let's just talk about existence first, and then I think that I'll segue into experience, and hopefully we can make it make sense. So this data structure here, this thing that's containing this thing inside of it, is existence, right? So this thing can't exist outside of existence. And that should make sense. So now we need to start talking about experience and perspective. Let's start with the human perspective. And then from there, we'll kind of chop it down into what I think exists fundamentally. So if we start with a human perspective, um, things exist because we experience them as existing, right? So let's say this is your perspective, this little box here. In here, you have like your, you know, like your sense of family and a home. You have like food and what you need to eat. You have like your goals and stuff, you know? And you also have like your senses about everything. So you have like your sense about like yourself, who you are, um, why you exist, how you exist, um, your thoughts, your feelings, any, anything you can point to 
in your experience is contained within this bubble here. Anything and everything. There is nothing that exists outside of this bubble that you have access to and vice versa. So there's nothing inside this bubble that you don't have access to. It's a fundamental part of, I don't know, I should be careful using fundamental here. It's, it's that is your experience by definition, right? <clears throat> but I would argue that the contents of this experience are existing through this data structure of existence. And the experience of consciousness that we have is necessitated by existence. And what I mean by that is that in order for any of these things inside of our perspective to exist, there must be a sense of it existing. Now, when we think of a sense, we usually think of a very human perspective on what a sense of something existing is. So that is to say, I have a sense that I am whatever your name is, right? I have a sense that these are my goals. I have a sense that I want to eat food. I have a sense that I was born and I'm living life and I'm going forward into life and things are happening to me and I'm reacting to them and I'm doing them. And I have that sense, right? But the sense is still just part of this bubble. It's not the actual existence itself. In order for, the, in order for any of these contents in here to actually exist, there necessarily must be some form of existence that contains a, an acknowledgement of, or not even an acknowledgement. We don't have the word to express this. I'm gonna, so acknowledgement and sense is kind of what I'm using here. So, so this data structure has a sense about what is inside of it, or rather it knows, quote unquote, that there's something inside of it. And what, what this data structure is, is you, right? And what I would say is that the, the data structure isn't encapsulating your experience. The data structure is encapsulating the entire universe. Um, and so existence or the sense of something existing allows for things to exist. And Again, I'm not talking about the human perspective of a sense. I think that we can talk about that in a second. It's a very specific way of looking at how things exist. But the universe, in order to exist outside of nothingness, right, outside of this void of, of something, requires some, some indescribable structure. And I wouldn't even use structure here but some something that allows the contents and the context of anything that exists to actually exist because outside of the contents of the context of something existing it necessarily does not exist and so um what we think of when we have a human sense about things is actually contained within this bubble here it's it's the, the contents of existence. So even our sense of our sense, right? So even our sense of like, um, this is something that I'm thinking about and I'm feeling or I'm thinking, or I exist at all is a sense, right? And these senses are arising from this fourth dimensional object, if that makes sense. So in the same way that if we pull kind of a a very discrete range, a close to discrete range out of this little squiggle that is our life. And we inspect the contents of the existence. What we'll find within that contents is a physical structure, as we would describe from a human perspective, that is telling us a bunch of things like a sense that I exist, a sense that my thoughts are my own, um, a sense that uh, 
So we have to think of these these as not senses as we experience them as, but as actual physical mechanisms um, as we traditionally think in like a 3D space with time passing. So every single one of these uh, pieces of information or these pieces of senses that we're experiencing in our little slice that we take out of our life, there's some physical structure in our brain that is that is arranged in such a way that the complex machine that is your brain is 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 configured in the way to have one of these senses we can't think of anything any of this stuff as outside of the brain right or as outside of the physical structure um that we think of but when i say physical structure remember i'm only talking about um the 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 contents not the structure itself of data or the of existence that's providing the the framework for the contents to exist in order for anything to exist there must be some level of, I'm going to call it acknowledgement of that thing existing inside the universe, right? Now, from a human perspective, that would mean that we, we know that it exists or we have a sense of some particular experience existing in a particular way that gives us uh, like certainty about, or some, some level of certainty about something existing in our universe. But what this data structure is, is doing is it's, it's very specifically and precisely acknowledging the existence of some something right all of this information that we're getting that we're experiencing right and th these aren't like thoughts these are like more than thoughts they're deeper than thoughts they're the the feeling the experience the like the the, the deeply rooted ideas and experiences that we have as humans and these are all simply information that is being uh developed in the brain as we are moving along our fourth dimensional body, right? Um, or not moving along, but like we're, as we're, we're picking different locations in this. So what we would say is that from a certain perspective about the brain, we would be able to decode this information from this particular moment in time, right? We would be able to look into the physical structure of the brain. And let's say we have like, you know, some impossibly high level of understanding of how the brain works we would understand that this particular structure is giving way to a particular set of senses or experiences so that's kind of like a an outside perspective right so we're just looking at the brain as like this kind of physical object this is a horrible brain but and so the next question would be like well where does like one's experience arise from so my main point here is to say that experience is fundamental and experience is derived is is a <clears throat> a lesser form of existence which is the fundamental data structure of the entire universe and it's not just that it's a a an encompassing data structure it's that any particular thing that exists even if it's just empty space and time necessarily requires some level of existence in order to exist right and that might sound redundant but uh, that's what i'm trying to communicate essentially and a part of that existence the part of the relationship of something and existing is some level of acknowledgement right so um it's not that there is a an agent or a conscious observer as we traditionally think of it from our perspectives but there is some level of acknowledgement, some something outside of our grasp, outside of our understanding within, within like, right? So we exist here. We can never exist out of here. We can never get out of it, right? But this thing that is outside of it is what is providing the acknowledgement of anything at all. So what we are and what we exist as, what we experience is constructed of knowledge which is a a byproduct of physical uh permutations of the brain right and so 
based upon a particular permutation of the brain, we get a particular set of experiences inside of these brackets of existence. But we exist as both, right? So it's not that, you know, they're separate. It's that in order for one to exist, the other must also exist. So there's no such thing as existence without contents, and there's no such thing as contents without existence. Um, because neither of these makes sense. It, it, it doesn't, you can't have um, existence without the thing that's existing, and you can't have the thing that's existing without existence. In order to be singular, in order to be separate, in order to have a category of thing different than another category of thing, necessarily requires some perspective, and perspective necessarily requires some piece of information or parts of information, and information in its most discrete form is physical reality.